Hey, this is Joe at Graybench Electronics. Welcome and welcome back. So this is gonna be the final video in the high watt build series, the R103. I have got the amp here hooked up, ready to do a final power up test. I've already gone through the process of making sure the amp didn't have any shorts, installed the preamp tubes, made sure everything's good there. So we're sort of at the second to last step where we apply the power tubes, but with a resistive load on the output. So I have just a high wattage, eight ohm resistor here on the speaker out of the amp. Output transformer secondary set to eight ohms. I've got the 120 volts coming in from the Variac, no current limiter, so the amp's gonna be running on the full power it will see from the wall. And right now I have my meter set up to just one of the first stages of the power supply. So we're gonna throw the sucker on. What you'll see is we'll have a very high current draw at first because the filaments of the tubes have a negative temperature coefficient, which basically just means they draw a lot of current until they heat up and then that current comes down. So you're gonna see the current shoot up at first and then it's gonna settle down and then it's gonna rise a little bit as the uh, tubes start to conduct more and draw more power out of the uh, power supply, which is going to, uh, which causes the current to increase. All right, so let's kick this off. We've got 120 volts coming in. We've got our meters turned on. Going to make sure my area is nice and safe and clear. Nothing is draping over. Not going to touch anything inside. Obviously, I'll give the normal disclaimer. Tube amps have very high voltages inside, enough to stop your heart, make you involuntarily spasm, and crack your head on something. So please, if you're if you're not confident working on high voltages or inside tube amps. Uh, reach out to a qualified person to teach you or learn from the many resources available on how to safely do it. This isn't an instructional video. If you're doing it, you're doing it at your own risk. So, all right, so let's hit the power switch. Standby switch is already on. Everything looks good. Here we go. So you can see our current jumped up to like 1.3 volts. It's actually was probably a lot higher than that. Our voltage here dropped up to 560 volts or so. And now it's gonna slowly start coming down as the tubes conduct, pulling that uh, increasing current through the power supply, which is gonna pull the voltage down. And our current is going to slowly increase as the tubes conduct more and more. And we're probably gonna settle out here around 530 some volts. And we're about 1.7 amps, well 1.07 amps, one amp and 70 milliamps. Take our probe off here. We can have a look at the output tubes. So that's what these bias probes here are for. So there's between each of these probes and ground are one ohm, 1% 1 resistors, and those are hooked up to the cathodes of the tubes. So we can read the voltage across each of those tubes, and that will be proportional to the current uh, because of Ohm's law. So right now we're reading 19 millivolts. I can go over to millivolts. We're at 18, about 19 millivolts on this tube. A little lower there, 15 or so, 16 and 14. So not particularly well-matched tubes. I just grabbed whatever out of my box. This was the highest one. And like I said, because they're one ohm resistors, then 18, about 19 millivolts corresponds to 19 milliamps of current through the tube. If we go and look at the plate voltage, plate voltage is about 537 volts. And if we throw that into the calculator, again, I use Rob Robinette's bias calc. Let me bring that up. All right, so here is Rob Robinette's bias calc. So we're going to set this to EL34. I think that's the same. Yeah, EL34. And we have 537 volts on the plate. Uh, class AB fixed bias, 50% cool is 23.3, 60% average is about 28 millivolts, and 70% max dissipation is 32.6. So we're looking for that somewhere between 24 and 28 millivolts. And right now we're at 23 millivolts on that tube, which is 23 milliamps of current. 21, 18, 17. As the components warm up at the tubes, warm up and settle into their temperature, they're gonna conduct a little bit more, that's normal. And so it's always a good idea to let the amp sit just to sort of balance out uh, but right now, it looks like we're going to be floating right there in between that 50 and 60% plate dissipation point, which I think is a good spot. It leaves space for your wall voltage to increase. Like, I put exactly 120, at least as exact as this meter can be. But sometimes your wall voltage can be 121, 125 volts, and sometimes it can drop lower. I've seen, you know, in the middle of the day, in the summer when ACs are going and everything, I've seen, you know, as low as like 117 out of my wall voltage. Tube amps are all analog, all linear, so it'll still work. Setting your bias for a nice like 50 to 60% mark means you'll be okay when your wall voltage is high and you'll be okay when it's lower. Worst case, it'll just be a little coolly biased. 
So everything looks good here. Twos were mismatched, which isn't ideal, but um, I'll have to get a match squad at some point for this amp. But it's good enough to do a listening test, which is going to be the next step. So let's go ahead and set up for that. One last thing I'll clarify, I'm just going to clip back onto the high voltage here. So you'll see we're still sitting at that 530 to approximately 540 volts on the plate. Uh, if we turn the amp off, you'll see that voltage from the power supply starts to drain very quickly. And that's because the tubes are still warm, so they're still conducting. But what I want to show is you can use a draining lead like so, or a uh, basically it's just a two alligator clips with a uh, about 100 milli or 100 ohm resistor in between there, some high uh, wattage. That's really there just to prevent sparks. You can clip that on. I'm gonna turn off this power just to be safe. And you'll see if I touch that, that basically just immediately drains out everything from the power supply. What I wanna show is you have to be careful. If I take this off, you'll see that voltage start to shoot up again. And that's because electrolytic capacitors have a, a memory property, there's a science -y name for it. But essentially, uh, it will redevelop a voltage across the capacitors and it can be enough to give you a little whack. So just something to be uh, uh, cautious of. Good idea to create a lead like this and just clip it on that way. Even when I take my meter off, I'm fairly confident that this is draining out those capacitors. All right, well, that concludes the build on the HiWatt DR103 clone. I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't seen the other videos in the build series, go check for the link in the description to the playlist. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to know when I make a new video. Also, there will be a short addendum onto this last video, so this is kind of like second to last. I am having a head shell made for this uh, amplifier, and so when that arrives, I'll be showing just installing the head shell into that. Short little video. Uh, there is a little uh, crackling going on. I think it's just maybe a bad tube, but... No big deal. I think otherwise, amp sounds really good. So yeah, I'm Joe from Great Bench Electronics. Thanks for watching.